All righty, let me just share my screen and then we'll be good to go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Um, let's get this started. Cool. All right, so I am Sean Moran uh, and my project was on FC Dallas. So I'm not gonna lie. So when I was originally assigned FC Dallas, I wasn't super thrilled. Um, because I don't know the first thing about soccer. I probably haven't watched a soccer game or at least attempted to watch a soccer game in about seven years. Um, and I haven't watched a full soccer game in my entire life. So that's an icebreaker for you. So as far as FC Dallas is concerned on social media, they have six social media platforms. Uh, so they have Instagram, they have Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Snapchat. As far as uh, platforms are concerned, the number of followers on each, Snapchat, I actually was not able to find a number four, but the other five I could. So for example, Instagram has 105,000, Twitter has 176,200, YouTube has 13,000, Facebook has 369,664, and TikTok has 8,000. So I actually went back and updated uh, from my first deliverable uh, the, the, the numbers of followers on each platform because they had increased a little bit. So the big question is why did the numbers vary between uh, each, each uh, social media platform? And the, the reason is twofold. So the existence of each platform is probably one of the bigger ones. Uh, so for example, you know, Facebook started in 2004. So if we go back to the previous slide, it would make sense that they have over 300,000 followers because Facebook has been around for over 15 years. Um, so they've had more time to accumulate their following on that social media platform. Whereas if you look at TikTok, which has only been around since 2016, uh, the fact that they have 8,000 followers makes sense. The second reason why the numbers in followers would vary is because the certain social media apps engage different age groups. So for example, the majority of Snapchat users are ages 13 and 19, whereas Facebook has a wide usage across all different age demographics. So if we're looking at Snapchat specifically, 69% uh, of people ages 13 to 17 use Snapchat, 62% of people ages 18 to 29 use Snapchat and then it, it kind of decreases from there. If you look at Facebook, uh, 13 to 17% or I'm sorry, 51% uh, of people ages 13 to 17 uh, use Facebook and then it kind of it, it increases really from ages 18 to 49 um, and they have a pretty large following. It doesn't matter how, how old you are. Uh, so compared to other teams in the MLS, FC Dallas ranks 14th out of 26 for having the most social media followers across different platforms. Um, so it's not the best, but it's also not the worst. It could be, they could be 26th and uh, that wouldn't be great. <laughs> uh, so some examples of posts, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll show you throughout the, the presentation, but FC Dallas on a game day is averaging five to six posts. Uh, and a lot of these consist of players walking into the locker rooms, their starting lineups, their highlights, uh, and usually those are in video format and then their final scores. Uh, so this is uh, an example of one of their players walking into the stadium, into the locker room. Um, the final score on the right, uh, where it shows full time, uh, the score was actually tied two to two. Uh, so now we're gonna get into the different players, some of the different players that play for FC Dallas. Um, so the first one is Fafa Picault. I think I'm pronouncing his name right. And if I'm not, I apologize. Uh, but he is one of the most outspoken players on FC Dallas. Uh, he has Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Uh, between the three of those platforms, he has about 15,000 total followers. Um, one thing that he has been really respected for in the MLS, not just on his team, but throughout all major league soccer is the fact that he is so advocate of, he is a huge advocate for equality. And, and using our voices to demand change. Um, so this tweet, when I actually went on his Twitter profile, this was pinned at the top of his Twitter. And it was really interesting because, you know, you hear stuff about, you know, being targeted and police brutality. You hear it from 
uh, you know, the news and, you know, maybe it doesn't hit you as much, but if it's your favorite athlete, like if somebody is a big Fafa the call fan and they're seeing this, like it, it might hit a little differently. So basically the tweet says that he got pulled over for the third time in three weeks. He didn't get a ticket. Um, or maybe he felt he actually had a conviction with all that's going on. And he said, regardless, it's tiring. I never highlight these things because they're routine for me, which is the biggest part of this whole tweet. The fact that he gets pulled over, uh, not necessarily because he did something wrong, but because of maybe the way he looks, um, because it's routine is very, very concerning. Um, and, you know, it was pinned, he pinned it to the top of his Twitter for a good reason. Is, and as you can see, it had over about 500 retweets. It had about 2,000 likes. Um, so it, it got some recognition for sure. He also, excuse me, also uh, posted this on Twitter on election day. Uh, actions speak loud in the words. So he's a very big advocate to go vote. Um, another player is Ryan Hollingshed. He's a Twitter and Instagram user. And similar to Fafa, he is very uh, big into how outspoken he is. Um, you know, if something's not right to him, he's going to address it on social media. He's very passionate about his family as well. Um, and another thing that he cares about greatly is the Children's Cancer Fund, which he raised, which basically they raise money for childhood cancer. Uh, so this is one of his retweets uh, from the FC Dallas page. But basically, FC Dallas said that they love and support our players. We join them in raising awareness for racial injustice against the black community. And so when Ryan retweeted that, he said, black humans made in the image of God, being treated like they are not, this has to change. Some things are bigger than soccer. And this is a picture of his daughter. Uh, as you can see, he's very, very passionate about his family. If you went on his Twitter or if you went on his Instagram, like nine out of 10 posts are going to be about his, his family. Like he's a big, big family man. Uh, this is when his daughter was first born. And this is when he was at the uh, Children's Cancer Fund 30th anniversary. And a lucky fan got to get a picture with him. Uh, another player is Jimmy Marr. He's the goalkeeper for FC Dallas. He's a Twitter and Instagram user. Um, like the other two, he's been very disheartened with racial injustice, especially it's been a long time coming, but a lot of things have happened this year where now athletes now more than ever are speaking out. Um, and he believes everybody needs to look in the mirror and take accountability in order for change to occur. So here are Several examples. Uh, the first three have to do with Black Lives Matter, equality and justice. Um, in the third picture, if you look, his daughter is actually uh, holding the Black Lives Matter flag. So it kind of combines two things that he cares very passionately about. So it's family uh, and, and equality. And then his uh, daughter is one week, uh, one week birthday, or one week uh, of her being born. And then as far as FC Dallas' fan engagement, um, the big thing, not even just with FC Dallas, but with all sport teams that I follow personally, um, they always try to find other ways to connect with their fans, not necessarily through, you know, what's happening on the field or in the arena, but they want to be able to engage 365 days a year, um, even in the off season. So that's, that's like the biggest part for, if you're in sports social media, that's the biggest thing that you're trying to pound is, is fan engagement. Um, so posts are usually unique. So I'll, I'll show some examples. Um, so on Halloween, they took a bunch of uh, pictures of their players when they were much younger, um, pictures of what they wore for Halloween. And so it was kind of cool to see. And the, the uh, comments that they got were really encouraging, really positive. Um, so, you know, they're, you can see it here, but there's, there's some, like a lot of laughing faces. Um, so every, you know, everybody's just having a good time with it. So it's a good laugh. Um, another one that they did that again, has completely nothing to do with soccer, but, um, basically they ranked the top 10 nineties movies in their opinion. And then of course, everybody in the comments either disagreed or like said, Oh, I love that movie or, you know, something like that. So these are some of the comments. Um, and then here's one that I actually partook in this uh, in this poll, but basically one of their players was look. Uh, one, FC Dallas wanted to give one of their players a nickname, um, and so they were asking for some different opinions. Um, I wasn't, to be honest with you, I wasn't a big fan of any of them, so I said that they were all bad, 
and uh, they could probably do a little bit better. But again, everybody had a good time. Um, and then when they were announcing the starting lineups on Twitter, what they actually did was they combined it with uh, dogs that were up for adoption. Um, and they replaced the, the pictures of the players with the dogs. So it was, it was pretty cool to see. And that is it. That is it. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Let me just stop this. Cool.